3D printing is an amazing technology, and one that I've used to create countless remote controlled robots and wacky machines. But could you 3D print the wheels as well? What about the tires? Would it have enough traction or would it be like driving on ice? Well, I wanted to find out. So in this video, I 3D printed custom robot wheels from the old and established to cutting edge foaming filaments that might just change the game when it comes to creating things that squish, bounce and roll. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse and welcome to my latest obsession, foaming filaments. In a recent video on flexible filaments, I tested this stuff. It's called TPU Air, made by Soraya Tech. It's a kind of foaming TPU, which looks like regular filament on the roll, but through a heat activated reaction in the hot end, it forms bubbles which aerate the molten TPU and creates real foam 3D prints that squish and flex in an honestly remarkable manner. And some time ago, a fellow combat robot builder gave me this, his test of using another brand of foaming TPU to make tires for a tiny combat robot. And I knew I just had to give it a shot myself. But you might be wondering, why bother 3D printing wheels or tires at all when perfectly good options exist already for remote control cars? Well, it's actually very challenging to find the perfect off the shelf wheel to suit your projects, especially here in Australia. It's always some kind of compromise on size. And even if you do find a suitable wheel, getting it to fit the gear motor shaft is always a finicky and usually pretty dodgy affair with adapters and the like. But what if 3D print wheel, including the tire? That would be so easy to do and open up a whole new world of design possibilities. Here's the plan. I built this simple four wheel drive test platform using random surplus gear motors I found on AliExpress. And I've designed up this simple wheel to be printed out in a range of filaments. We have PLA Plus, an 85A Shore Hardness TPU, TPU Air, Piba Air, and finally, I've laser cut these tires out of EVA foam, which is something I attempted on my budget robot build measured response. For the flexible tires, you still need a solid hub to mount it to the gear motor. So I designed up these hubs and printed them out of good old faithful glass filled PBT. I don't hype up this material just for clicks. I genuinely use it a ton for project parts like this that need more strength and flexibility than PLA Plus can provide, but it honestly prints just as easily. Powering the whole thing is a Malenki Nano, which is an all-in-one receiver and speed controller, and that takes care of the front two gear motors, and I used two older brush speed controllers for the rear two. A few years ago, I built a similar platform to test wacky wheel designs, but I slaved two brush motors to one speed controller, and I put them in parallel, and it turns out that's a bad practice because it can allow one motor to bog down while the other gets all the power. So I hope in this case, although they're different ESCs, that all motors will get full power regardless of the condition of the surface that it's driving on. And about that surface, to best represent a dusty arena floor, I grabbed this sheet of MDF from the garage and I did nothing to it. It's a bit dusty, it has a bit of debris on it, but otherwise it's quite smooth. And I feel it should give a pretty analogous result to what bots actually experience in the arena. At least until James from Broken Link Robotics puts his robot in the arena and spends three minutes doing this. Yeah, RIP our floor. I've got the little bot hooked up to a load cell and that should give us an idea of its pulling force and thus the traction of each wheel material. And if you need custom parts for your robotics project, then this video sponsor PCBWay can help. All of these incredible parts were made possible through PCBWay, who make CNC machining, 3D printing, and of course, PCB fabrication easy and affordable. And PCBs don't just have to be green anymore. You can choose from a huge range of different colors to truly make them your own, including a purple solder mask, which is now free. So you can give your boards a funky fresh look for no additional cost. All you need to do is upload your file, whether it's a Gerber file for PCB fabrication or a step file for CNC machining in a huge range of different materials. Then you choose your finish and in no time at all, you'll have professional parts arriving at your doorstep. 
You can use coupon code PCB slash MakersMuse10 to get $10 off any order of $30 or more. And they also have design competitions running all the time where you can win all kinds of prizes. So go check them out at the link in the video description below and let's get back to our wacky wheels, starting with PLA+. PLA Plus is a great material for general projects and prototyping, but for wheels, yeah, nah. This thing is hilarious. In fact, these solid wheels have even less traction than I expected. It literally feels like the embodiment of those cartoons where they run on the spot and then build up momentum and fly off. It takes ages to get going and then slides for ages when you slam on the brakes. But surprisingly, it's actually really fun to drive. These PLA wheels kind of remind me of when Drift RC was becoming a thing and people would put PVC pipe on their wheels instead of rubber tires to drift their road controlled cars. So even though I have pretty slow gear motors in this platform, you can actually get some pretty interesting drifts going with just a bit of practice. However, as you would expect, the actual pull strength is abysmal. Using the PLA Plus wheels, this robot platform could barely overcome the weight of the chain as it bobbed back and forth. And at best, I would say it had 26 grams of pulling force. So unless you want to build a drift bot, don't print wheels from PLA+. Wow, who knew? But what about normal TPU? This stuff is silky and stretchy, and I'm sure many of you have thought it would make a great tire. Surely it has a bit of grip to it as well. Well, what I have here is a roll of 85A TPU, which was originally provided to me by Ford AM before they promptly filed for bankruptcy, and it's really soft. It's possibly the softest TPU you could print on a regular printer, and even then I had to slow down the flow rate on the Bamboo A1 substantially to get it to work without any under extrusion. But does that squishiness translate to a grippy wheel? Well, not really. Sure, it's nowhere near as slippery as the PLA Plus wheels, but it's still slipping and sliding quite a bit on a perfectly smooth floor. You actually see the robot skidding a little bit every time it starts and stops. When it comes to the pull test, it reveals that it does have some traction at about 111 grams. That's over four times more than the hard PLA Plus wheels could manage. And I reckon you could get a platform moving around with these if the center of balance was over them, but good luck winning any kind of pushing match. But with modern technology, we can now take regular TPU and make it foaming TPU with what's known as blowing agents. And it's this material that prompted me to make this entire video in the first place. TPU Air from Soraya Tech isn't the first foaming filament to hit the market by any means. ColorFab have had their VarioShore foaming TPU, which CNC Kitchen actually tested out four years ago. Time flies. But I actually never ended up trying it because I assumed it would be as stringy as normal TPU, but even worse because of the foaming and getting it in Australia was a very expensive exercise. But I was pleasantly surprised to discover that foaming TPU filaments actually print remarkably well, at least that's been my experience, as long as you dial in your print settings and dry the heck out of it. Soraya Tech have several excellent material profiles available, which allow you to adjust the sure hardness of the foam by varying print temperature. The hotter you print, the more it foams and the softer the resulting foam becomes. I went with the middle of the road 260 degrees Celsius, which results in a 70A sure hardness, which is way softer than any regular TPU you could reasonably expect to push through a standard extruder setup. And then made sure in Orca Slicer to enable avoid crossing walls so that travel movement stayed within the printed part as much as possible, which helped to avoid stringing a lot. And I also switched the printing style from printing by layer to printing by object which lets you print each part sequentially instead of all at once, providing that you can have them on the print bed without colliding into them each time. This actually helps you avoid a ton of travel movements, which then would avoid a ton of stringing, and it massively improves the resulting surface finish. Finally, I made seam alignment random, which spreads them out around the tire and prevents a visible seam line. Now that may have an effect on traction, it may not, but I mostly just did it for appearance. I printed these on the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, which is an excellent budget 3D printer. Mine runs in land mode using Orca Slicer, and the resulting prints are quite frankly incredible. I've been using 3D printers for well over 10 years, and in fact, you can 3D print a foamed part with this level of accuracy without blowing the bank has instead blown my mind. <laughs> okay, enough gushing. Pretty tires do not win pushing matches, so let's see how they perform. 
You can tell from the second I twitch the sticks that these tires are something else. These gear motors don't have a super high top speed as I mentioned, but they reach it pretty quickly and the traction formed by these foam TPU tires gives it an incredible precise feel. It's difficult to describe how planted it does feel, but slamming the controls back and forth rapidly, I think does a pretty good job demonstrating it. The platform barely slides at all between accelerations and decelerations, and it's almost like it's bouncing between two points. On the test bench, it performed just as impressively, managing to pull up at around 140 grams. And these aren't the most powerful drive motors. I think if I put these wheels on modern brushless gear motors, we might even see the world's first 3D printed foam tire burnout. And I could test them against off the shelf solutions or even two part urethane concoctions. If you'd like to see that test, then please let me know in the comments below. But just as I was getting all excited over this fancy foaming TPU, Soraya Tech dropped this, Piba Air. This is the first of its kind on the market and it's some funky stuff indeed. If you've never heard of Piba or polyether block amide, I don't blame you. It's a fairly new filament on the 3D printing scene and it was made popular through the somewhat silly 3D printed basketball craze last year. And that's because Piba is flexible, just like TPU, but unlike TPU, it has really high energy return, similar to that of a bouncy ball. Like, check this out. I printed this airless tennis ball by Fillet 3D on the Snapmaker U1, review coming soon, and well, Yeah, she be bouncy. So Piba is cool, but what about foamed Piba? Well, this stuff is a little bit harder to print than its TPU equivalent because it's prone to warping. You need to make sure the print bed is at a nice and toasty 80 degrees Celsius, even on the textured PEI, and an enclosure is recommended. It also needs to be dried really, really well. That seems to be a theme these days. Because the tires aren't too large, I decided to forgo the enclosure recommendation and print them just one at a time on the A1 Mini, and they did complete, but the print quality is noticeably worse than the foam TPU tires. I also forgot to change the seam from a line to random in this case, but I feel it probably would have made it look worse because it's quite prominent indeed. And the prints have this weird feel to them. They're certainly foamy and have some squish, but they're not nearly as soft as the TPU air prints. And that's even though they're printed at 260 degrees Celsius, which means they're meant to have a 74 A shore hardness versus 70 A of the TPU, they seem to feel much stiffer and they're both printed with identical 15% gyroid infill. They are more bouncy, but it's also not as dramatic as an increase as you'd see when comparing regular TPU to regular PIBA. The prints also seem to have a fair bit of shrinkage, as expected, but even with the same generous clearances that made the foam TPU tires fit loosely on the hubs, these tires are a tight press fit. Now that is actually better in this case, but just something to be aware of if you want to print this material. And when it comes to performance as tires, it's not bad. The robot felt like it had good control and maneuverability, and I'd say it feels just slightly less grippy than the TPU air tires. Where it did strongly differ, however, was when you try to turn on the spot, because this four wheel drive platform has fixed positions for its wheels. They can't pivot and turn like a standard car. They can only turn the platform by adjusting the speed and direction of the motors on each side. This is known as skid steering, and it's the same concept as how a tank can turn on the spot, or that stupid trick that the new electric G-Wagon can do. Turning like this is mechanically simple, but causes huge wear on the tires. And interestingly enough, with the Piva Air tires, when you skid steer on the spot, they do this weird bouncy vibration resonance thing. It's pretty weird that the Piva Air tires do this, but the TPU Air ones don't, so if you have any ideas, let me know. On the test platform, the Piva Air tires performed pretty well, really, pulling a consistent 130 grams, which is only 10 grams lower than the TPU Air tires. But the difference will definitely get wider as you increase the power and speed of your drive motors. To round out my tests, I wanted to try a few additional things. One, do treads improve traction? And two, how do laser cut EVA foam tires compare and finally three, can we coat the tires in something to make them even grippier? I came up with this knobbly tread pattern for the TPU air tires and once again, they turned out beautifully and they feel totally fine to drive on. I feel tread could be really handy if you want to build an off-road platform or even 3D print tires for your rock crawler where it would really help the tires bite into an uneven terrain but on a flat bit of MDF, it did result in just a slight loss of traction. 
down to 125 grams of pulling force from 140, seen with the slick tires. They do, however, look way cooler. The laser cut EVA foam tires, on the other hand, were so underwhelming that I didn't even bother driving the bot around because I know from previous experience with my budget robot build how little traction EVA foam actually has. It's not the same as the nice high traction neoprene foam that you'll find in light flights or similar foam wheels. And I was able to get 111 grams pull force out of them, which seems unusually high to me. Maybe it's because they're quite soft. They squish down at its higher surface area contact in the ground. But trust me, it's not worth laser cutting foam tires. If you really want off the shelf foam tires that don't suck, there are plenty of online suppliers. There's just like none in Australia. And I'm not gonna spend $50 shipping on a handful of tiny wheels for my little robots. I'd much rather be able to print it which is what this whole experiment was all about. And finally, I wanna address one of the ideas that many of you commented on on my budget and weight robot build when I found out how low traction EVA foam had. Coating foam wheels in liquid latex, which apparently massively improves their traction. It's not something I've ever seen done in the Australian robot combat scene, but apparently it's pretty popular elsewhere. And I came across this video by Robert Cohen from five years ago, testing out its effectiveness. It's a great video and you should definitely check it out after this one. He found that the liquid latex worked quite well, but once again, finding liquid latex in a store here in Australia um, isn't the easiest. Thankfully though, it's Halloween time and the stores are instead full of these little vials of liquid latex makeup. So I thought I'd try a few of those bottles instead. The first one I opened up was completely off, I think, because it was all lumpy and stank to high heaven. But the second one is nice and liquidy, but it's white, which is unfortunate. Anyway, I applied two generous coats to the tires and let them dry fully. But I don't know, this stuff doesn't seem to be remotely similar to the liquid latex that Robert Cohen tested. It's a bit tacky, but it seems to be a lot thinner and it actually reduced the traction of the tires all the way down from 140 grams to a pathetic 84 grams. I was so confused by this result that I double checked everything. I checked if the batteries were charged, made sure that nothing was burning out or current limiting on the speed controllers. I even swapped back to the treaded tires and yeah, they were the same results. So whatever it, this stuff is, this liquid latex makeup, it's not correct or at least it's not the right kind. Or maybe it's just gumming up instantly with the dust from the MDF and turning into a low traction surface, like sort of similar to using a sticky lint roller when you roll all the cat fur off you, ask me how I know and they just stop working instantly. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna order some uh, proper liquid latex from a reputable supplier and give it another crack, but that'll take some time to arrive. Also, apparently it's advised to coat the foam in a rubber cement first, but again, I haven't seen that kind of glue since I was in primary school, so a source of that would be great and highly appreciated as well. Either way, I'll get to the bottom of that next, and of course, the most important question, how do these foam wheels actually perform in combat? Do they survive? Do they actually have traction in the arena? Well, you have to wait for that one, so make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell for notifications because YouTube is completely broken these days. A big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. You can get your awesome CNC parts made through them with this coupon code for $10 off any order of $30 or more. And I'll catch you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Bye.